Glow On by Turnstile. 15 songs. Is that my reading this now? Yeah, that is 15 songs, 34 minutes long. So I need to work on my monitor placement sometimes. Um, and Turnstile are known for like, you know, somewhat harder rock style of things. But this was, I guess this is the trend this week, where artists who are in traditional um, genres kind of try to branch themselves out a little bit and do things a little bit differently than they normally would. So, I mean, Mystery Begins, where you feel, like, pretty well at home, where you get, like, your loud guitars, your drums, like, you, you get, like, a lot of sound in there. But even that song, you sort of get a hint of, okay, things are going to be kind of different here. And then you get very early through it, and I'm not going to jump the gun here. I'll let Shauna kind of go in here. But, like, very early through it, you can tell that there's a lot more um, genre blending going on here. Maybe not even experimentation, but definitely genre blending. Yeah, it's not, uh, it's not very experimental in that regard, but there is definitely a genre of um, blurring and bending where you have indie motifs in here, you have alt-rock motifs, you have early early alt-rock um, motifs that sound like Blackout, sounds like, you know, Foo Fighters before they sucked ass. Um, and you have a different, a couple of different sounds throughout the record. Um, but I ended up enjoying it nonetheless. Big thing that I like with it is that even though there are 15 tracks, they're all really short and sweet and to the point of every track, which in a modern rock album, you kind of, you have to do unless you're like a, basically a legend of rock or anything, but it's a lot of the rock albums we've gotten. Some of them have been long, like uh, example, Smashing Pumpkins record. That was like two hours long and it just winds out and you can't find any good uh, or it takes a long time for you to find any good substance in it because the rest of the album just feels like filler. This record doesn't really have any filler in it. Everything is pretty cohesive throughout the record. And um, you get some, like, example, Don't Play, you get some punk motifs in there. You can get, like, some harder rock motifs throughout, too. So you have a lot of different genres that they're trying to throw and bend into and, and morph it into this, all into this one record space. And I like it. Yeah, um... Don't Play is like a really good, I think, like blending there because the songs before that are pretty like in the harder, faster rock kind of thing. But Don't Play, you sort of got to get some, it's a thing I like doing when I'm like editing music and drums, especially where I like kind of flip the drums a little bit and kind of have them do like a fade effect kind of where they're almost reversed. And you kind of get mm -hmm. that in the latter part where it's like an alternative kind of flip of the song of Don't Play, which is really fun. Yeah. Um, after that, you have Underwater Boy, which is kind of what I was alluding to. It's like almost like a surf rock track half the time. Um, it's very like interesting in its own way, but yeah, it's very interesting in its own way. Um, definitely, it would be polarizing if you are into the band or not. But I think it's like one of those things where you have a you know, like the same punk sensibilities where like you have a sort of approach to a song and how you uh, portray yourself about caring about that song and the way it's sort of like perceived and going mm -hmm. like that um, versus like how it actually comes out in the different instrumentation. Like we said, it sounds very surf rocky, um, but still like really interesting. Yeah, like like that track too is pretty cool because you, you will like have like the surf rock-ish theme and then it like, cuts to like a couple seconds of hard rock and then it goes straight back to it. So it's like, it was like a schizophrenic in a way, but it's purposely for that until like towards the end where it really mills out and you have that throughout it. I really like that track. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of thinking of like, cause there's only one main feature on here who's blood orange who appears on, um, alien love call and love desire. I'm love. I'm sorry. Lonely desires. Um, the Lonely Desires track at the end is a lot more like a traditional like turnstile track where it's a lot like heavier. But um, Alien Love Calls a little bit in that kind of slower vein, almost grungy in a way. Um, so you just get like a whole range of different things here. And it's pretty like, oh, cool. yeah, it, it's definitely really cool. Yeah, I like Alien Love Call a lot. It's different where it's like, it's almost like a psychedelic-ish track with how it, the guitar in the background goes out and it's really echoed. You can hear it throughout, like the effects on it are really cool. The the um duet that goes on and um throughout the whole track too. It's a really fun um track to have it in that middle of that record to break it up a little bit. Yeah. Um overall, like it's pretty good. Like overall, like yep. TLC, like if you're still looking for that like hard punk shit, like there you go, you will get that with that 13th track right you there. You also get Wild World and a couple others too. Yeah, 
Yeah, so I think it's got a little bit of something for everyone, but like it'll help kind of like get people's feet wet if they're not into like the harder stuff because you'll see a bunch of things from like, you know, um, other flavors of rock music kind of around here. And yes. we haven't, in our Rock is Dead conversation, we didn't, didn't include hard rock as much as we did with indie as far as like what would help resurrect rock or kind of like keep it living. Um, but I think something has to be said for some of the... Um, rock outfits that we reviewed here and there on audio face throughout the um, months and years that do try to push that boundary a little bit. Cause th they also yeah. um, kind of get a shout out there too. Yeah. Cause like my favorite rock record to date um, that we've reviewed on this podcast um, is preoccupations there. Um, trying to think of the name of their record that we've written in 2018, um, new material in 2018 is my favorite by far. And that you get some sense of harder rock and stuff in there, but then you also have a lot of indie influences and uh, alt rock influences, a bunch of other things in that record too. But um, there is a lot, and I can't wait to get to that conversation again when we can early next year and everything, because there's a lot this year that is a bit different than what I had envisioned, but there's some stuff too that we both said was going to happen as well. So it's going to be a good conversation and it's a good album. Certainly. Arbitrary scale this week, steel companies, steel manufacturers um, in the United States, United States based. And what are you going to give this one? I was going to give this a uh, Bear Tech Alloys Incorporated from Placentia because uh, shut up Placentia. You know, just a, a solid one to four, four and a half, 4 4.9 mil in sales. So it's a small operation. But you know, it's a smaller operation, you get a bigger cut because maybe you only got like 10 employees or some shit instead of like a couple hundred. So Boston gets more. Yeah, you're keeping a nice um, sort of, uh, you know, everyone can more or less make a living there. Um, maybe, yeah, you exactly. could, maybe you could up the maybe sales. Maybe it's co-op. You never know. Bit, but yeah. What's uh, the dream? Not likely, but <laughs> this is this. Uh, th th this is steel, not like vegan hamburgers. But <laughs> I was actually going to either give it that or um, Continental Steel and Tube Company from Fort Lauderdale. Um, you know, there's something that feels really blue collar, something like that. I feel it. Okay. 